Hiya, yeah, it's Fred Crowell back on the George Emily. We're doing very well now. We've started a programme on the outside of the hull prior to putting all our fittings back on. We're always trying to make sure there's a coat of gloss paint behind any fittings that go on and then we know we've got some protection to the hull. It also acts as a separation barrier in case there's any rot in the products that you could be putting on and that gives you a, a good point to work to. Now this is where gloss we've got on here. It doesn't look very glossy just now because we've wet and dried it to, to smooth it off prior to putting the fittings on. This is again this is where lovely gloss that would have been donated by Hempel Paints. Thank you very much again to them. And we we'll have on the bottom we've got our first coats of anti-fouling. Now here we we'll have our scuppers fit in position. This is how the they should be working. So if they take a wave on inboard, the pressure would open the door and let the water run off the deck to give it stability back. They fall automatically to a closed position, but if a wave hits it, it can't get through there. You may get a little few dribbles, but no big load of water going through. Now if we can look down here a wee bit, these were the bilge rails that we were prepping up on the last film. They are all now clenched into position, full length, both sides, and a few coats of paint on them. So that's both sides of the boat stone. That's including all the bilge rails and all the scuppers. There's 20 odd scuppers in here. So there's a fair bit of work fitting them. Quite a few screws gone in there. We have now got a water line marked throughout the boat and a few coats of paint on it. And again, it's purely to make sure we have coats underneath fittings. We also have a name on, it's only a sticker. It's not gold leaf like the finished job, but it's just to let people see the name of the project as we're coming through. And again, the gloss on there, it's been sanded off. That's why it hasn't got a shine on it, but it's lovely paint. Right, now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna journey upstairs because we're busy making the plans out for the, the whale back and the moles. So we'll show you how to do a little bit of lofting work. These are a few photographs we have of the actual boat from Seam Harbour. When it came in, I don't know if you can quite see a close up on this photograph, but there's patches all the way along. That's where the rails are, and that's what happens if you don't get coats of gloss paint on behind the rails that you put on. On the next shot here, this shows you the rails that have gone on, and this is where canopy that we're busy making now. So it's quite a bit of work to start on. We've got to start from blueprint to finished product on that. So we'll show you roughly over here. We'll have a set of drones. Now I've had um, Ernie Cooper, who's one of the, the Heritage Trust members, has been in and he's been a good help with me on the drones. It's always better when there's two people working from the drone than one. So what we'll do is, this is inch and a half to the foot. What we'll have here is a board marked out. What we'll do is we'll have a sheet of ply, we have a, a center line, and then 12 inch stations across and 12 inch stations up. Then a, a, a smaller line in six inches in between. So this assists you in your measurement when you're working from side to side. Now we we'll transfer our marks from our plan onto here to be full size. I don't know if you can see the lines on here, but what we do is we only draw half of the line. We don't do a full line because they're so close, if you got all your lines together, it would give you a problem. So what we tend to do is mark one, two, three, four alternate the side of the boards and that gives you a distance between and keeps your lines well separated so once we've got your lines on the board we'll have to transfer the lines 
I've already have one piece on there that I've done. So what we'll do is you mark half of the board, put a center line on, turn it over, duplicate it again, and then that gives you one piece. Now, what I need to do is duplicate that bit of curve there. So I'm gonna put that on there. So I've got a few nails. I know that's where I want to be, so I'll stick a nail in. So that's the exact place that's going to go. A little mark on each end where I finish on my line. Just put a little mark on there so I know which way I'm going. Now what we'll do is we'll get some nails. You can also do with this with tacks. And we'll put the nails on the pencil line. If it's a tight curve, you just put your nails a bit closer together. If it's just a, if it's a, a long straight line, you can put your nails about four or five inches apart. And we'll transfer that under there. And you very carefully Offer that up to your three nails. You know that's the position. Gently press on there. A little bit of treatment. Now when we lift that off, some stick in, some don't. Might have to put these on. Now if you look close up to this, you can see we we'll have our nail heads. That's all the other side of the head. Just transfer their marks slowly round. And there's a nice curve lifted up off the board. So that would be cut out on the bandsaw. I already have a few bits that I've prepped up. Now the lines that are on are the extreme of the job. So we've got two thicknesses of half inch planking. So you're, after you've made your mold, we we'll reduce it by a half an inch. And that gives with the position that we need to build on. So what we do now is we'll put that into position. We know we've got a mark on my board here. We've cut a curve to match on the top of there. We'll just slowly push that round into position. We know where that's going to be. We've marked the line in here and the line in there. That shows you the extreme of the pieces of timber underneath. That then gives you a position for to put your screws in. So we'll put a pad goes on there you put on what center line and that gives you a point to work from also have here a datum line which matches through the whole of the canopy mark that also have the baseline of the, the mould. Now another thing you need to do when this is in a frame position and we're doing our construction we're going to need to get cramps underneath so your base will be lifted slightly up so we always stick a couple of inches on there. Get all the frames constructed We'll then make a platform over there. It'll be about two foot up off the ground because we need to get underneath to work on the, the nails and the, the fixing of the frames. It'll look a bit like an upside down whale on a beach with the ribs and a, and a dead dinosaur or something like that. And then we'll bend our frames, then the timbers, and then we'll start the planking program. And you, you work to a reverse. It's not like when you're building a boat where you build the hull first and then steam the ribs in. This way we're working to a dedicated size and then we'll 
where finished boards go on the top. This is the moulds actually in place. We we'll have various stations where they're located. We're just putting the, the last frame in now. We did bend a big lump of timber yesterday. That's here is a nice bit of uh, four by inch and a quarter oak. Had about an hour in the steamer. Took a bit of bending, there's quite a bit of strain on there, but that's the king plank for the job. As you see, the framework we had to have here quite a few bits of support because the load would have been pushing directly down under there and collapsed the moulds. So for your initial bend, quite a few bits of timber in, they will be coming out to give us access once we're further on with the job. Now, if you look on the side here, we'll have lengths of stud bar in. What we'll do is we'll put a one between each station and then as you need to position your frames, you can loosen the bolts off, move them back and forwards, get them positioned exactly what you want. And then we'll have notches to cut out of here to bend more stringers. They are inch and three quarters by seven eighths oak. There's two of them go in and then we'll put our small ribs in. Uh, the advantage of the stud bar is once you get your stringers fastened in, you can either take them out if they're in your way, you can slip them out and you can always slip them back in. If it's moulded bits of timber that are nailed on, you finish up destroying the job. So it's worth your while to spend a little bit and do the stud bar. As I say, it gives you very good capability for getting them in any position you want. So we're now ready to mark all these. We'll have our datum line on here. So we'll now have to measure out each stringer point and then we'll bend a, a lump of timber across there. I think we'll have a small piece on the top here. This is a guide line. This will be inch and three quarters by seven eighths. So there'll be a one coming along there and there'll be a big sweep down to the bottom and then we'll have another one on here which creates a big sweep down to that bottom. So our next job is cut the slots out to do our fitting. So hopefully next time we see you we shall have a bit of timber on the job. Goodbye.